the content you're making and the strategies that you're using might not be helping you grow on Instagram. And I don't want that for you. Look, Instagram has been around for over 10 years now. So some of the tried and true growth strategies that used to work years ago just are not that effective anymore. But beyond that, in the past several months, we've seen some serious changes to how the Instagram algorithm recommends content to users, what the culture of Instagram looks like, and what types of content are performing best on the platform. So all of these changes should really be considered when it comes to the strategies that you're using for growth. So let me get you up to date on what strategies for Instagram growth are kind of outdated no longer that effective and what you should be replacing them with. And because I am still in Valencia and I feel like it would be a shame to just spend the whole time in this Airbnb, let's go on a little adventure. Since Reels were released in August of 2020, things have changed quite a lot. I recently made a change to my Reels strategy that resulted in over 10,000 new followers on Instagram. So. Let me tell you about what I changed. And I think if you implement it, it'll probably be helpful for you too. To me, what it comes down to is a balance of more trendy content, which maybe means something a little bit different than what you've come to think of it as, but a balance between trendy content and valuable original content. When I'm talking about valuable original content when it comes to short form video, really this is the strategy that I talked about in my TikTok strategy video because ultimately I am using that same type of vertical short form content on my TikTok, on my Instagram Reels, and on my YouTube Shorts. And what it all comes down to is my theory about the YouTubeification of vertical video platforms. So if you want to learn more about that, you can check out my TikTok strategy. But basically, what it comes down to is providing bite sized, valuable, highly visual, and highly engaging content in the form of a short vertical video. So overall, my TikTok and my reel strategy looks quite similar with the exception of that injection of the more like trendy reel style content. Cause I do think it's important to use a little bit of both if you wanna get the best results. To illustrate this, I think it would be helpful to show you some of the top performing reels that I've made recently and how they've contributed to my growth. So essentially part of what led to me gaining just about 10,000 new followers on Instagram over the past few weeks is these two videos which were both breakdowns of my 2022 income streams for my business so one of them was like by month and then one of them was breaking it down by like category now these were trending formats i saw other creators making videos like this and seeing really really good reach from those videos so I tried it for myself and obviously that was very effective, but it's not all about that trending content. So this is my third most popular reel as of recently. And this is where that valuable original content piece comes in. So in this reel, I was talking about why you should consider starting a YouTube channel and why I think YouTube might become more popular actually than TikTok in this coming year. So this is not really a trending format. This is literally just me talking to the camera, sharing my thoughts on social media strategy, and it has over 100,000 views now, which is pretty crazy. Here's where this all comes together. The trending content is really what helps you get viral reach. These are formats that people are used to seeing. These are audios that are performing well in the algorithm. This is how you can get your content in front of new eyes. But if you only ever post this kind of surface level trendy content, then you're not gonna end up with loyal followers who want to see your future stuff because it's going to get repetitive if i just kept posting the same stuff about my income streams over and over again nobody's going to want to follow me in the long term because that's going to get boring so that's where the original content really comes into play and obviously it can perform really well as well but that's the substance that keeps people around the next outdated strategy is all about hashtags so let's talk about it in the past, everybody on Instagram was going out of their way to use as many hashtags as the app would allow on every single post. Which by the way, if you're curious, it's 30. 30 hashtags is the total, it will stop you after that. If you were strategic, you might've even kept a note in the notes app on your phone of a list of different hashtags that you would use on different posts depending on which content pillar you were posting for, which topic you were posting about. A few years ago, this was a really effective strategy because back then, hashtags were the primary way to get your content discovered outside of your existing audience. But all of that has changed. 
Obviously one of the biggest changes is that Instagram introduced Reels, which totally changed how discoverability works on the app. But they've also just updated their recommendations algorithm. It's more sophisticated than it used to be and Instagram is using a lot of other methods for figuring out what your content is about, categorizing it, and then recommending it to users based on their shown behaviors, interests on the app. And so people are finding content through their explore page, through recommendations on their home feed and not really through like searching up hashtags. And so in our current context on Instagram, hashtags have just become one of the many ways that you can communicate to the algorithm what your content is about so that it can more effectively recommend it to potential interested users. So really using hashtags is just a smaller part of your overall strategy of kind of indicating to your potential audience into the algorithm what your content is about. So the most effective ways you can do this, using three to five specific hashtags that are like genuinely relevant to the post you are adding them to. They're not just generic ones that you're using all the time. Another thing you can do is actually add the built-in topic tags to your reels in particular to indicate what subject matter your reel is about. So you really wanna think about hashtags as part of a larger, more holistic way that you approach branding yourself on Instagram rather than getting too caught up in like really trying to hack this for more reach. I'm gonna make a prediction about you. If you have been really really focusing on using as many hashtags as possible to try to get your post in front of more people chances are you're a business owner that is trying to grow your profile on Instagram so you can find more customers more clients and if that is the case trust me there are other more effective strategies that you can put in place to reach your goals I'd really recommend checking out HubSpot's free resource on Instagram for business that's right it's totally free it's linked in my description you can check it out right now this free guide will walk you through everything you need to know about building an effective strategy for growing your business on Instagram. It is perfect for beginners and especially for small business owners that need a holistic approach to growing your business online using social media. So HubSpot's free guide for Instagram for business is linked in the description. Make sure you go check it out. And thanks again to HubSpot for sponsoring this video. Yes, I have come to the beach wearing a toque, but I feel like it's still worth it because it's beautiful here and it's sunset. The next outdated Instagram strategy is trying to make your grid look magazine perfect. And the updated version of the strategy is treating your Reels covers specifically like YouTube thumbnails. Going back to our previous strategy with trying to use all the hashtags all the time. I feel like that is very typical of what I refer to as the blogger era of Instagram. In my mind, the mid to late 2010s is such a specific era on Instagram where everybody was aiming for like this really curated level of perfection. And don't get me wrong, being curated is still definitely a part of Instagram culture, but I feel like this was especially strong in like 2016, 2017, when people were using 30 hashtags and trying to make their grid look perfect. Like there was like the puzzle grids, the checkerboard grids, you know what I'm talking about. And with the current state of Instagram the way it is now, that is just a very outdated approach to branding and aesthetics in my opinion. Basically, I just think it's important that when you are crafting an Instagram strategy in 2023, you don't let aesthetics outweigh strategy, especially when it comes to your reels. In particular, a big trend that I've seen since reels started a couple years ago is people adding covers to their reels that aren't necessarily applicable to the reel itself, but it matches with their overall overall Instagram theme or grid because they wanted to post their reel to their grid but they also didn't want it to look ugly which I understand however it's not all that helpful to you when it comes to your actual growth because let me just paint a picture for you here when people discover you on Instagram through Reels, they're scrolling through their Reels feed. They come across your Reel, they find it helpful, interesting, funny, entertaining, whatever it might be, and then they tap on your username to go to your profile. When they do this from the Reels feed, Instagram defaults to bringing them to your Reels section of your profile, and then later on they can you know, go to your main grid if they want, but they show up on that Reels page of your profile. And if what they see is just an assortment of random images that don't have any real connection to what you're talking about in 
in your reels, they're not going to be overly enticed to tap on one of them and start watching it. Now, this is a real key part of the user journey because at this point, this is when you can turn a viewer into a follower, someone who's actually going to be engaged with your content going forward if you actually get them to tap on more of your content and keep watching more of your videos. So at this key point, if you're just adding generic covers to your reels that fit the aesthetic or help keep your grid looking good, you're losing potential followers. That is why I highly recommend thinking about your reels covers like YouTube thumbnails. Do you want them to fit into your brand, look good on your grid? Yes, but you also want them to communicate something about what your reel is going to be about. So at that key juncture in that user journey, you can actually convince somebody to become a follower and not just a passive viewer. So the way I approach this is I like to pose for a little thumbnail shot when I film my reels. I add my signature Lightroom filter to it and then I use my brand font to add just a very short and quick and hopefully enticing title to that reel cover so it's very clear what the video is about and hopefully I can convince a potential follower to actually tap on it and watch the video. So don't let the obsession with a perfect grid and aesthetics get in the way of actually making that user journey very effective for your potential followers and therefore growing your audience with reels. By the way, let me know if y'all like these tips videos when I take you on a little bit of a journey or if you prefer just sitting in the Airbnb. I feel like this is more fun and interesting, <laughs> but uh, let me know in the comments. And we are back at the Airbnb for tip number four because it was getting cold at the beach and the sun was setting, so here we are. The fourth strategy that is outdated is honestly trying to beat the algorithm. The updated version of this is creating content with your audience in mind. Let's be honest, who among us in the past has said that we're trying to beat the Instagram algorithm? Don't be shy, I know you did it too. Here's why that is not the right mentality. Instagram has crafted their algorithm to try to get the content in front of their users that their users are most interested in. We need to remember that at the end of the day, Instagram's goal is to keep people on their app as long as possible. The longer you scroll, the more ads you see, the more money Instagram makes. And part of keeping users on the app longer is having them satisfied with the content that they're seeing. So the algorithm is not out here to suppress you or keep you from getting in front of your audience. It's just trying to serve users what's gonna keep them on the app the longest. And with that being said, I think that as creators, we're really going about things the wrong way if we're spending all of our time thinking about what the algorithm wants rather than thinking about what our audiences want. When you get too focused on like pleasing the algorithm, you get caught up in a lot of these outdated and ineffective strategies, trying things things like posting all 10 of the potential carousel images because that's gonna help keep users on your post longer or using a million hashtags every single time or trying to post at the exact same time every single day or multiple times a day. These are common hacks that people use to try to beat the algorithm, but it ends up actually making your content probably less good quality because you're spending all your energy trying to do these different hacks rather than spending that energy on just making good content that your audience wants to see. Too many creators are thinking about Instagram as a little machine where when you press the right buttons and you do the right hacks, then followers and likes and growth come out. That's not how it works. We're creating content for humans and you need to keep that in mind when you're making stuff and you're posting. You're not just trying to beat the algorithm, you're trying to create stuff that people actually wanna see. And the best way to do that is to get a good sense of who your audience is and also Think about what you like to see on Instagram. What kind of content do you come across that actually makes you pause and engage and take in what you're seeing instead of just scrolling right past or closing the app? Really think through those things and use them to your advantage rather than spending all your time on these hacks. At the end of the day, we need to be creating content for audiences, not algorithms. So hopefully these strategies have given you a new perspective on how you might approach content creation for Instagram in 2023. If you want a more in-depth look at my current workflow for creating short form vertical videos, not only for reels, but also in a way that I can post them to Instagram, to TikTok, and to shorts, then you should check out this video that I made about my TikTok workflow. It's applicable to reels too. Also, thanks again to HubSpot for sponsoring this video. Make sure you check out their free resource on Instagram for business at the link in the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having adventures and following your dreams, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.